<laughs> okay, here we go. All right, section one dash four, number one. Okay, so we have four x minus three equals negative five x plus six. Okay, so solving something like that, we have five x to each side, and nine x minus three equals six, and three to each side. 9x is 6 plus 3, which is 9, divided by 9, divided by 9, x is 9, divided by 9, which is 1. I'm not going to explain that one to you. If I need to explain that to you, you need to go and see Mrs. Wait, we're just straight solving the equation? Yeah, but it's going to be, that's like, that's that's one from, from sixth grade. Yeah, I know. Okay, I, know. <laughs> I mean, they're not all like that. Okay, there's one like that. Like I said, if you can't do that one, if you need an explanation behind that, you probably should go see Ms. Gertler. Think about transferring out. Don't do that, though. Okay. So that's an easy one, all right? So x equals one, okay. All right, let's look at question number three. Any thoughts on how we're gonna do number three? It's a three x minus two squared. And when you square, can I just square both those? Is that okay? No, when you square something, it times it by itself. So we're gonna do what? Times five, and that's four. How do we times two terms by two terms? What do you call that? It is factored. What's the opposite of factoring? Uh, foil. Foil. Okay. All right. So we foil this thing out. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x. I'm going to skip a step here. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. I'm not going to write that because my inverse is also negative 6x. Negative 6x and negative 6x is negative 12x. Then our last negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And then we foil out the right-hand side. x times x is 9x squared. Um, I'll write this one out. X times 4 is 4x. My inner is 9 times negative 5 is negative 45x. Last is negative 20. Now think about this before we, before, before you shout out an answer, okay? You might uh, have a gut instinct, but then you think about it, you might change your gut instinct. Must this equal 0? Like this one, we never made this thing equal 0. Must this equal 0? Why do you say no? I'm not saying yes or no. If I give you something like this, x squared plus 12x equals negative, uh, let's do it, uh, 32. Must that equal zero? Must I set that equal to zero? Well, Should I add 32? Solve the x. Right, but I mean, in order to solve something like this, do I have to add 32 to each side? Yes, you do. Why? It's a quadratic. It's a quadratic. Second degree. It has to. And I told you guys in algebra two that quadratics always have to equal zero. That's not totally right. It's not just quadratics. It's not just second degree, but anything second degree or higher has to equal zero. Okay. You got to set. I mean, it's how we solve this. I'd add 32 to each side. Add 32. We'd have x squared plus 12x plus 32, and then we would solve by factoring. X squared would be x and x. No negatives, so plus and plus, and it would be 4 and 8 because they times the 32 and they add to 12, and the answer would be negative 4 and negative 8. Quadratics, anything higher than secondary, secondary or higher, must equal 0. Now, that being said, do I need to make this equal 0? Is that a quadratic? Remember, quadratic's the power of 2. I'll take either yes or no, okay? Some people say it's a quadratic because it's right there. But why would some people say it's not a quadratic? I mean, it, it is, but... Maybe combine. Well, I have a 9x squared on each side. What can I do? So is it a quadratic? It was, but once I subtract 9x squared, what? What if it was 9x squared and 10x squared? Yeah, well, then it would be a quadratic. You're not going to be able to eliminate both at the same time. So it's a quadratic very temporarily, okay? So it doesn't have to equal 0. And my, my point is this. If I give you this question right here, 4x minus 3 equals negative 5x plus 6, this doesn't have to equal 0. We could make it equal 0. We could. We could add 5x and add 5x and subtract 6 and subtract 6. If we do that, we have 9x minus 9 equals 0. And then add 9 and then divide by 9. You, you could do that. You don't need to, though. Okay? It's first degree. Do not have to equal 0. Okay? They don't have to. I mean, same thing with something like this. If I gave you 2x minus 7 equals 1, 
I mean, you should be able to answer in four words. How would you solve that? Well, first thing you do is add seven, then divide two. I could do this, though. 2x minus 8 equals 0. There's nothing wrong with that. It's an unnecessary step, though. Now I would add 8 and divide by 2. Okay, It doesn't have to equal 0. I want to point out to you, I just want to make sure you understand this. If I give you 4x plus 3 equals 9, could I add 3 to each side? If I gave you that, could I add 3 to each side? Yeah. I could. You don't want to, though. You don't want to what? Subtract 3. But I could add 3 to whatever you do one side, you do the other. Could I minus 5 to each side? Sure, I could. It wouldn't help. Okay? So, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. All right, so in this side, we have negative 12x plus 4 equals 4 and negative 45 is negative 41x minus 20. Okay? And I'm going to get rid of one of the x's. I'm going to add 41x to each side. We do that, we have 29x plus 4 equals negative 20. Subtract 4 to each side. 29x equals negative 20 minus 4 more is negative 24. Divide by 29, and the answer is negative 24 29 Not a very nice number. That happens from time to time. So that wasn't no different than question number one, except we foiled first. Foiled a couple times. Question number five. Okay, so we have 3x plus 1 over 6x minus 2 equals 2x plus 5. Now, one thing you might be thinking of based on the last worksheet, I could have factored this right here. I could have factored it 2 out. I definitely could have done that, okay? Just watch. I didn't, and there's a reason. If I factor a 2 out, it's going to be 3x minus 1. You could do that. I'm not going to. I'm going to erase that in just a second here. There's a couple reasons why I didn't do that. One, I mean, why do we factor? Cancel stuff. What's going to cancel? Nothing for two reasons. There's two reasons why nothing's going to cancel. One, there's nothing on top that's also on bottom. And two, an even better reason, it's, well, not subtraction, it's the equal sign right here. You can only cancel things if you're timesing, okay? If I give you this right here, 3x plus 4 over 2x minus 5 times x plus 1 over 3x plus 4. Could I cancel anything here? Yes, you can. There, you cancel those. If I give you that, you can't cancel those, okay? And if it was an equal sign, you really can't cancel anything, okay? What's on top is also on bottom if you're timesing. That's when you can cancel stuff. So, was it 6x minus 2? Is that what it was? So it was, wasn't it? Yep. Any idea we're going to solve something like this? We take, when you have a fraction equals a fraction, in case I gave you something like this, 2 over 5 equals 7 over x. You guys remember how to solve something like that? We take this times this, and it has to equal that times that. 2 times x equals 5 times 7. That always works. I'll show you why. It's like cross multiplying and dividing, basically. It's kind of like cross multiplying and dividing. If I give you this right here, 3 sevenths equals uh, 9 twenty-firsts. Okay? That is a true statement. And you might be going, well, because I times that by 3, and I times that by 3. You're not wrong. But you know what? 9 times 7 is 63. You know what 3 times 21 is? Also 63. So if I give you this right here, is 5 over 8 the same as 4 over 7? Well, that's 32. That's 35. They're not equivalent fractions, okay? If you have equivalent fractions, when you diagonally times, they have to equal each other, okay? So, let's do that. This times this has to equal that times that, okay? So, let's write that out. 3x plus 1 times 4x minus 13 has to equal 6x minus 2 times 2x plus 5. Then it's like the problem we just did. So if we do that, we FOIL, we have 12x squared. Our router is negative 13 times 3 is negative 39x. 
On the end, there's 1 times 4x is 4x. And my last 1 times negative 13 is negative 13. We foil out the other side. 6x times 2x is 12x squared. Outer, 6x times 5 is 30x. Inners, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4x. Last, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Based on the last question, you should be able to answer this by now. Do I have to make this one equal zero? Is it a quadratic? It is right now, but it will go on in very, very, in about five seconds, it won't be. If I subtract 12 x squared each side, they're gone. And I just crossed them out. I did that. I didn't show it, but what I did was I subtracted 12 x squared each side. Okay? So, so we do that. We put these together. We have negative 35 x minus 13 equals. Over here we have 30 and negative 4, that's 26x, take away 10. And we add 35x to each side. We do that, we have negative 13 equals 61x minus 10. Add 10 to each side. Negative 13 and 10 is negative 3 equals 61x, divide by 61 x is negative 3 over 61. So these are, you know, not that we did algebra, these questions in algebra 2, but they're a little more in depth. But other than just foiling stuff that you've done before, the answers are coming up kind of yucky, but that happens on time. All right. Seven. I want to get through at least a couple more of these. Probably seven and nine, that'll probably be it for the day. Okay, uh, I am not going to write down the original problem. What am I gonna, how am I going to alter the original problem? Back to x squared minus four. Yeah, that's the difference of squares. So I'm going to write four over x plus two, plus one over x minus two, equals 5x minus 6 over x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay. All right. Now I am going to get a common denominator. Okay. I am going to get a common denominator. In my common denominator, well, I have an x plus 2. Let me see an x minus 2. Then do I need to write down x plus 2 over here? I see it over here. Do I need to write it down? No, I already got it. Do I need to write down x minus 2? No, I already got it. So our common denominator is x plus 2, x minus 2. So draw a fraction bar with x plus 2, x minus 2, plus a fraction bar with x plus 2, x minus 2, equals a fraction bar with x plus 2, x minus 2. Okay, so let's look at these one at a time. To make this first fraction's denominator x plus 2 into x plus 2, x minus 2, we have to times by x minus 2. So we times the top by x minus 2 with 4x minus 8. Then we look at our second fraction, the x minus 2. I want x plus 2, x minus 2. So we times the top and the bottom by x plus 2. We have x plus 2. And then these are all in the same denominator, so leave the numerator alone. Now, I don't think I ever told you guys this in Algebra 2. I'm going to see if anybody can figure this out now. Any idea what we can do right now? I, I don't think I showed this to you before. It's a really nice and really simple step. Okay, we're definitely going to add the, okay. Um, yeah, we're definitely going to do that. I would do that next. I would do something before that, though. If I gave you this right here, Cancel what? Now be careful, like these. When you add them, you're going to get 5x minus 6 on the other side. Oh, okay. All righty. Well, yeah, okay. I tell you, what, you, guys, you guys are not wrong. You're not wrong, okay? I want you guys to get this step, though, okay? If I was to just put this on hold, if I give you this right here, x over 4x minus 3 plus 5 
over 4x minus 3 equals 7 over 4x minus 3. Does anybody think they can do that one in their head? I would hope so. If you look at it carefully, I really think you should be able to do this one in your head. Anybody think they know what uh, x is? What? 2. How'd you do that so easily in your head? It should, 2 is the answer. How'd you do that? Okay, so I'll tell you what. Um, do you know what X is there? Very good, neither do I. I have no idea what X is there. Why was this one so easy? Are you even looking at the, once you saw they're the same, are you even looking at them? You don't even have to look at them. I mean, if the bottoms are the same, the top, so basically this is saying what plus five is seven? Two, the answer's two, okay? So you know what I could do with these denominators? Ignore them, just ignore, you don't even have all of them, okay? You don't even have to look at them, okay? So, let's do that. We're gonna have four x and x is five x, and negative eight and two is negative six, equals five x minus six. If I really, really want to, I could put the denominators in there, but you don't need to. You don't need to. Now you could solve this, you could keep going here if you really, really wanted to, but literally look at it. Look at what we have here. It says 5x minus 6 equals 5x minus 6. When is 5x minus 6 equal to 5x minus 6? 1. What do you mean 1? If I plug in 1, is it true? Yeah, 1 is 5x minus 6 equal to 5x minus 6, always. 1 is 12 equal to 12, always. 1 is 8 equal to 8, always. 1 is 5x minus 6 equal to 5x minus 6, always. So, I mean, if I, so for example, I plug in 1. If I plug in 1, is it a true statement? Is 5 times 1 minus 6 equal to 5 times 1 minus 6? Yeah, yeah what if I plug in 2? Yeah. It's true for all real numbers, okay? So, have I ever, I've shown you guys this thing before, haven't I? Double RR? Like a capital R with another stem on it. Have I ever shown you guys that I've or not? Seen that before. That's a symbol for all real numbers. If you want to write out words all real numbers, go ahead. I just I write double R. It's called double bar R. Okay, it, it works for everything. Okay, let's get one more in. Now again, I want to make sure you guys understand that you're allowed to ignore the denominators if they're all the same. Okay, if they're not the same like this one. I have no idea what the answer to that problem was. That's significantly tougher. Okay. Okay, last one we're going to do. So we have 5 over 2x plus 3 plus 4 over 2x minus 3 equals 14x plus 3. I'm not going to write 4x squared minus 9. How does that factor? 4x squared take away 9. And that a difference of squares also? Yeah, 4x squared is 2x, and 9 is, so 2x plus 3, and 2x minus 3. Okay, this is almost the same problem we just did. Okay, very, 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 very similar. Okay, so let's draw our fraction bars with 2x plus 3 and 2x minus 3. That's our common denominator all over the place. 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3, 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. Okay, so to make 2x plus 3 into 2x3 plus 2x minus 3, we times by 2x minus 3, so times the top by 2x minus 3. We do that, we have 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times minus 3 is minus 15. Let's turn our 2x minus 3 into 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3, we times by 2x plus 3. 4 times 2x plus 3 is 8x plus 12. And this denominator is already the same as that, so leave 14x plus 3 alone. So now what do we do? We learned it in the last problem. What do I do with those denominators? Ignore them. Just ignore them. Don't even look at them. Okay? So if we have 10x 
an 8x, that's 18x. Negative 15 and positive 12 is negative 3 equals 14x plus 3. Okay. Subtract 14x to each side. Do that. We have 4x minus 3 equals positive 3. Add 3 to each side. 4x equals 3 plus 3, which is 6. Divide by 4. x equals 6 divided by 4, which is 3 ax. Now, we're sitting there going, cool, we're done. We're not. Okay? And we go, you said we're going to stop at 9. Well, yeah, we're going to stop at 9, but make sure this is still going. Good, it is. We're going to do all the way through 9. We're not going to go beyond number 9, but I'm going to tell you right now, both 9 and 7 are wrong. Now, we're sitting there going, oh, crap, we did all that writing for nothing new. No, 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 no. They're wrong, though. Both of them are wrong. Number 9 and 7. Number 9 is the one you're probably going to find out first, okay? This, we didn't make any mistake anywhere. Didn't make any mistake anywhere. I'm going to tell you right now. The answer is not 3 over 2. Okay? Why? Why isn't it 3 over 2? Now, I'll tell you what. Here's the answer and where you really need to look. Everything we did was good. You need to look back at the original problem. Okay? The original problem. Okay? It's, uh, is it? Okay. Tell you what, let me give you this for a huge clue. If I give you this right here, if I give you y equals x plus 4, what numbers can I plug in for x? Anything. I can add 4 to any number, okay? Now, what if I give you this? Can I plug in whatever I want for x? y equals x minus 3 over x minus 5. No. What? What can I plug in? There's one number I'm not allowed to plug in. Four is good. One number I'm not allowed to plug in. Hmm? No, one's okay. Zero? You're on the right track if you say zero. Zero's okay on this one. Negative. What? Fractions. I thought I heard somebody say it. You said fractions. No, fractions are okay. Why? Huh? Why? Oh, no. I didn't know. No? Well, we're all dealing with real numbers right now. This is it. Here it is right here. Well, You're not know. allowed to plug in 5. Why? Oh, because it'll make it divide. Uh, it'll make it divide by 0. So you can't you can plug in whatever you want except for 5 because you get 0 on bottom. Okay? Can you plug in whatever you want for this? Mm -mm. What can't you plug in? Close, not three halves. You're close, but totally wrong. Seriously, it's not positive three halves. If I plug in negative three halves, I mean, what makes this zero? Set this equal to zero. What make, what would make this equal zero? You're not allowed to plug in negative three halves. If I plug in negative three halves, you get what? Zero. Where? On the bottom. Well, we didn't get three halves. What can't you plug in here? You're not allowed to plug in 3s because you get 0 on bottom. So where's our mistake? Nowhere. But the only possible answer is 3 over 2. And you're not allowed to plug in 3 over 2. So what's the answer? We didn't make a mistake. The only possible answer is 3 halves, and that's not allowed. Okay? So we said the answer back here was all real numbers. It's almost right. It's not all real numbers. Not all real numbers. You can't plug in everything. What? What'd you say? Okay, keep looking. I agree. You can't plug in negative two. Keep going. So it's all real numbers, except for two and negative two. You're not allowed to plug in two. You're not allowed to plug in negative two. So all real numbers except x equals negative two or two. You plug in whatever you want except for 2 or negative 2, okay? So, real quick, let me give you a really simple one. Why, when you divide something by itself, what do you get? 1. If I gave you x minus 3 over x minus 3, am I dividing something by itself? Yes. So, is this always 1? 
It's always one except for one value. What's the one value? Three. three. What happens when you plug in three? You don't get to, you don't get to plug in three. You use zero on bottom. This this is one for everything except for three. What if I gave you this? Am I dividing something by itself? So I always get one except for when I plug in what? Three and four. You're not allowed to plug in three or four. So this would be all real numbers. It'd be one except for when you plug in three or four. Okay, we're done for today. Okay, you got almost a half hour. You can work on your assignment.